now that we have the menu, we'll concentrate on doing that the thumbnails part. As you can see, there is a, a visual effect that appears when you mouse over uh, the thumbnail. Basically, we'll try to do it uh, with Axure. And as you can see, it's not very feasible to actually put a rectangle there and try to apply a transition into that triangle. A uh, rectangle, sorry. It's not going to be very efficient. This is why we are going to introduce now the component called here dynamic panel. The dynamic panel will allow you to have the same object with different kind of states basically. So we'll have the, this state which we will call um, an active and when you mouse over it it's gonna be called active. So what happens is the thumbnail fades when you actually mouse over it, a text appears and also for the name of the of the guy here uh, there is a pro uh, badges that, that appear. So we'll try to do that in action. That uh, thumbnail is 220 pixels wide and 191 uh, pixel high. So let's put first a rectangle with those dimensions. So here we have our main container and now we'll try to uh, add the thumbnail here. So remember that a thumbnail is always um, a placeholder in Axure because we don't want to put a real picture in it. So the thumbnail is going to have a dimension of precisely 200 pixels and 150 pixels. So here we are. Now we'll also add uh, the details of the thumbnails by adding the number of views, the number of comments, and the number of likes. So I'm going to enter that. 1606. I'm also going to reduce the size a little bit. Oh, not one, it's going to be very hard to look at. Okay, so I put 11. The number of view 65. And the number of likes also. You don't have to be very precise when you enter the data but basically what I'm what I'm trying to achieve when I do wireframe is to put uh, real real uh, data in it so it appears more uh, true because if you actually put the Lorem Ipsum in your wireframe okay you will have a lot of content as Lorem Ipsum strings are very long but it's also not real most of the clients will actually say, oh, what is it written in German? Of course it's not German, but uh, they think it's German most of the time. And um, they will also uh, don't understand exactly what's going to be in that specific part of the screen. So if you put real data instead, or um, or uh, data written in in, uh, in well in, in uh, right English, uh, it's going to be much more true to what the final product will actually look like. Now we will also add uh, the small icons. Remember, I don't want to put any kind of visual indication to the designer um, other than uh, placeholders. Okay, here we go. And finally, we will add the name of the guy. So imagine the guy is called Simon, and the thumbnail too, which we which are going to have a dimension of 15 by 15 pixels. And I'm going to place that. Okay. And I think it, it's in bold. Let's put that in bold. Okay. So now we have we have a thumbnail. But the real tricky part is to is to add this kind of effect there. So this is where the dynamic panels come in, come in place. So you drag and drop the dynamic panel there, and you put it above the form that you want to uh, have the effect on. So basically, this is this is it. What I'm trying to do is to put the dynamic panel always a little bit bigger than the actual size of the component because otherwise, if you put exactly like that. For instance, um, sometimes there is a conflict between the border of the of this here and um, and the, the border of there. So basically, if you put the exact same dimension there, 
Um, sometimes in some cases and in some browsers you won't see the right border so this is why I'm trying to put a dynamic panel that is a bit bigger than the actual form so here is the dynamic, dynamic panel if you double click on it you have uh, the possibility to, to add a label to it so for documentation purposes what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, naming all, all my components by putting the, the uh, the first two letters of each word uh, as the title. So a dynamic panel will be DP and I put the name so it's DP thumbnail. And here you can add, add as many states as you want for that dynamic panel. Remember we have two. We have when it's an active and when it's active. So, oh sorry, you have to click two times on, on, the, on the name and wait like one second for the next click. So an active and you add another one called active. When that's done, you, you click here and as you can see it has opened two tabs at the top of the screen. So one for an active and one for active. What we're going to do now is to take everything here, cut and paste this state to the inactive tab. So for for uh, for cut and paste, either you go to edit menu and um, cut, or you can also use the Apple X uh, command and Apple V to paste that. So here you will need to put uh, your component exactly in the upper left corner of the of the page, because here you can see the the blue. Dot, dotted line here uh, that represents the actual size of your uh, of your dynamic panel. So, if uh, if I actually put a, a bigger uh, a bigger dimension for that dynamic panel, here you can see that the blue line is is bigger actually. So, but we don't want to do that. We we want to have a dynamic panel that is exactly that is nearly as exactly as big as the as the dynamic as the component. Okay, so here we have that state and let's copy it again and paste it again. But the difference between an active and active is when you actually uh, mouse over the component, uh, the, the thumbnail fades and here you have some basic information on, uh, on the thumbnail. So let's go to active and let's actually put the information um, the information of uh, of the thumbnails. Okay, so this is going to be the title, and I think it's a size of 16, and it's in bold. Okay. This is the description here, and we also are going to put the date. Oh, I made a mistake. Let's put that in bold, and let's put in the lower left corner. We are also going to add a pro badge. Uh, just right below the beneath the uh, the name of the of the author. I'm going to have it as a rounded rectangle. Let's zoom that a little bit just to make sure that we have the right stuff. Okay. So you can you could also play with the um, where is it? Where is it? Oh here. With this side menu there to uh, instead of here. No, 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 sometimes it's just a matter of personal preference. Okay, here it's still a little bit bigger, I think. It's too big. Okay, let's put a size of 10. Then let's put up a back color, and this is actually in white. Okay. So let's move that to a size of 100%. Oops, sorry. Okay. 
So here we have this inactive state and this is when it becomes active. Uh, what we can also do... Um, no, well, we're going to wait and we're going for the first time to generate the prototype. So let's click on prototype there. We generate it. It doesn't exist, so you, you click on yes. And now you have your prototype there. So what we have is what we have constructed so far. Uh, but you can see there is the dynam dynamic panel there, but when I, when you actually mouse over it, well, nothing happens. That's normal, don't worry, we are going to cover that right now.